Saint Teresa of Avila, one of the greatest mystics and saints of the Catholic Church, in seeing a vision in which Jesus showed her the place in hell that he had saved her from, said that this was one of the greatest graces of her life. I will show you the gates of hell through the eyes of the purgatory mystic Saint Francis of Rome, but not yet. First, we must see purgatory through her eyes to understand this, that even though in purgatory the suffering and the time are greater than anything that we have ever experienced here on earth, it is nothing in comparison to the fires of hell, and that every single soul in purgatory is eternally grateful to God for having saved them from the fires of hell. And if we don't understand what we are saved from, we don't understand salvation. If you would like to support this channel in any way, please do so through Buy Me A Coffee. Now, let's enter purgatory. In the name of the Most Holy Trinity, here begins our discourse on purgatory, in which, with God's gracious help, the visions which were shown to Blessed Francis and which she revealed to her spiritual father will be described. After the conclusion of all her various visions of hell, which are described in the chapters above, the saint related that she was then led away to see purgatory. This realm, she testifies, consists of three divisions or levels, lower, middle, and upper. She perceived at the entrance to purgatory a great sign made of shimmering crystal. It bore the following inscription written in lettering of vibrant, opalescent brilliance. Behold the realm of true purgation a land of hope, not desolation. Oh, many pains are here for sure, but they will not for long endure. For when its time decreed here ends, each soul from hence God's mercy sends to heaven's kingdom of pure light to reign in holy love's delight. As Francis entered purgatory, she sensed once more the invisible princes of her celestial guardian, the Archangel Raphael. This mighty angel said to her, This realm is called purgatory, for the souls who are here are in the process of being purged of their sins and guilt. For this reason, it may also be justly called the place of hope. The lowest of the three regions of purgatory is filled with flames like hell, but the flames here are of a different quality and nature to those in hell. For the fires of the inferno are black and lightless, whereas the flames of purgatory glow with a vivid red and give forth radiant light. The light of these purifying and cleansing fires illuminates the souls which are here with divine grace. Through this illumination, they come to realize the saving and liberating truth and to understand that their term of purgation is fixed and finite. Francis saw the location of the souls in purgatory was proportionate to the gravity of the sins which remained on their conscience at the time of their death. For those who were guilty of more grave and serious sins, they were immersed in the lower levels where the fire was more intense. It was also revealed to Francis that for each and every unatoned mortal sin a soul had committed, they would be obliged to do a period of seven years of penance. Francis next turned her gaze to the demons who were assigned to service in purgatory. Every soul has its own demon assigned to it who stands at its left side. This demon constantly reminds the soul of its guilt and the gravity of the offenses it had committed against the Almighty, saying, Lo, these pains you suffer very rightly on account of the crimes you have perpetrated against your God, who created you and redeemed you with infinite love and generosity. Instead of following the truth, you prefer to be seduced, by the illusions and deception of demons like me, who are all fiends and liars. How often you succumb to temptation, ignoring the gentle voice of the Lord, to listen instead to the nefarious whisperings of the world, the flesh, and the devil. So now you are paying the price of your iniquity and doing just penance for your countless sins. These reproaches, together with the hideous aspect of the vexatious companion demon who uttered them, not to mention the cleansing fire which abounds in purgatory, were a source of very grave suffering for the souls who were serving time there. 
Francis noted, however, that apart from these verbal reproaches and their annoying presence, the demons in purgatory did not torture the souls to whom they were assigned in any way. For the sufferings in purgatory, though undeniably severe and painful to endure, are not inflicted as punishments. Rather, they are the workings of celestial mercy and necessary to fulfill the requirements of divine justice. Their intent is not to harm, but rather to heal. As such, these sufferings resemble surgical operations which are painful, or medicines which are difficult to consume. They are admittedly deeply unpleasant and irksome, but at the same time wholesome and healthful. The saint also perceived that the souls in purgatory cry out continually, but this crying out is of a very different nature to the hopeless vociferations of the souls who are damned to hell. For in hell, the wailing and moaning of the souls is a sound of utter despair and agonized desolation. But in purgatory, the crying out was rather an expression of sincere and heart-rending penitence, and it was even of gratitude at the mercy of God. While these cries were far from exalted or joyful, they nevertheless were infused with a kind of firm hope and spiritual beauty and they were nothing like the black and jarring cacophony of despair, which resounded ceaselessly in the fiend-haunted netherworld of the inferno. This firm hope and strength, which could be detected in the tones of the cries of penitence that came forth from the, the denizens of purgatory, sprung from the fact that each of these souls realized that all that it currently suffered was merely temporary and a necessary part of its preparation for heaven. Indeed, these souls, though they endured pains and torments of varying degrees of intensity, all knew with absolute certainty that in due course they would arrive at the ineffable joys and radiant splendors of the kingdom of God. As mentioned earlier, the demon who was assigned to each soul in purgatory to remind it constantly of its sins and the ways in which it had offended its loving creator was situated at the left of each soul. Francis next went on to say that at the right side of each soul there stood an angel, an entity of indescribable beauty and magnificence and bathed in the splendid glow of ethereal refulgence. This angel was, in fact, the very same spiritual entity who had been appointed by God to serve as a guardian angel of the soul during its earthly life and who now continued to protect and comfort it in purgatory. Francis observed that the angel would encourage the soul it accompanied by communicating to it all the prayers and alms which were offered for its sake by relatives and friends who were still alive. The guardian angel who stood at the right of each soul would also respond to the vexatious demon who stood at the left. Whenever this demon would remind the soul of the sins and vices of which it had been guilty during its mortal life, the angel would respond by reminding the soul of the deeds of charity and piety which it had performed. It would also remind the soul of the good works it had attended to do, but never actually put into practice, and also of the times when it had sincerely and earnestly fought against some temptation, whether successfully or unsuccessfully. For God, the most just of all judges, considers not only actual words and actions, but even the unseen desires of the heart and the hidden intentions of the soul. This merciful Lord never demands of us more than his grace gives us the strength to do and never tests us with any temptation of trial, which is beyond our capacity to endure. This book, The Visions of St. Francis of Rome, is for the first time translated into English. Previously, we only had it in parts and in its original language. The primary focus of it are the visions of hell, something which I must show you and we must unpack. Especially now in our time, even for us who believe in hell, we don't know what it's really like, or we don't want to know because we are afraid. But we need to understand what Jesus has saved us from. And purgatory and heaven don't make sense except in light of the horrible ugliness of hell. When you take a look at the book, it's about 100 pages long. 70 of those pages are dedicated 
strictly to hell, the rest to purgatory in heaven. Clearly, that was the most important part. Meditate on these words about purgatory and let it prepare you for what you will soon be hearing about hell.